a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Star Wars and Lebo Makes 3 2011 by Michael Reeves and Maya Catherine Barnhoff A short story which serves as a prelude to the novel Shadow Games created and read by The Archivist Publishing The Rodian glanced around the Nexus den as if looking for someone he desperately hoped not to see. Sitting across from him at the dimly lit corner table in the seedy port bar, Dash Rindar absently wondered why he even bothered trying to see. The air was a bilious pool of deathstick smoke and other inhalants, all designed to make the present more interesting and the future less attainable. His lungs protested in spite of his shallow breathing. Aside from the smoke, the place smelled like stale droid lube and fermented fruit. He'd been in worse. Although it didn't seem like anything to be particularly proud of at the moment. His Nautilan partner, Aidenvril, endured it the way he endured everything, with silent stoicism. Nautilans as a species tended to be unemotional. Add to that Aiden's few decades of training in the Terrace Cassie martial arts discipline, and the result was a very inscrutable alien. They'd been working together for over four months, and Dash still found it hard to fathom what was going on much of the time behind the amphibian's large, maroon eyes. All right, look. Kud Garida said at last, his vocal organs giving the basic a whistling, rubbery sound that made comprehension dicey. Once again, Dash marveled at the alien's choice of occupations, Stand-up comedy was hardly the best choice for someone whose sibilants and fricatives all sounded alike. Not that most audiences stayed around long enough to be annoyed by this. Put bluntly, Darth Vader probably did better shtick. But concern about Garida's financial future would have to take a back seat to concern about their own. As far as Dash was concerned, it was all over but the counting. He doubted that Aiden wanted to spend the money, but a mech of all trades would be useful aboard the Outrider. Remind me again what he's programmed for. Dash prompted the Rodian. He'd swear the guy was sweating, and Rodians didn't even have sweat glands. Garita ticked off, one by one, the droid's features on his scaly digits. Navigation, piloting, and weapons and the usual repair capabilities that be standard in the early series. And you're selling him because? Another quick glance at the door. Cause they misinformed me. Was told the safety protocols been hacked good already. They lied to me. The Rodian glowered at the dormant droid. He a Mopak bodyguard. He'll shoot at the sentients. But he won't hit him. Not even one time. What good's that do for me? Or anybody? A heavy thump from the door's direction once again drew the Rodian's attention. Dash decided it was time to wrap up this palaver. Comedian or no, the reader's behavior suggested he was expecting something decidedly unfunny to happen at any second. It was even making Aiden jinky. Judging from how the heavy cilia on his head twitched, whenever Garida's nervous gaze swept past the entrance. Besides, if the Roldian was under some sort of time pressure, that could only work to their advantage. 1500. Dash offered. He got a baleful look from Garida's black, insectal orbs. The comic's fleshy proboscis worked angrily for a moment. Then, suddenly. Fine. Give me the creds, quick. I gotta get off. Well, if you need a boost off world, we can offer that too. The Rodians round, bulbous eyes seemed to protrude even further. No, no. I, uh, I can find another passage. 
Hey, come on. You don't need to do that. You got us now, my friend. One thousand. Plus a lift aboard my ship, off this world. Garita made a slurping sound that approximated a human's gnashing of teeth, then stuck out a scaly hand. Fine. It done. How soon do you, um, we, space? Dash, suppressing a grin, handed over a 1,000 credit note. In one hour, at dock 8412, in the Midtown facility. Garita nodded and stood up to leave. Aiden halted him. It's got a restraining bolt installed. What's wrong with it? The sharp, bitter odor of rank fear again pervaded the air. Nothing. Just want to make sure it's not wander off. That's all. Great. Let's fire it up. Said Dash. The Rhodian looked like he might cry. Dash had never seen such a sight. In fact, he wasn't even sure if Rhodians could cry. Look. If I'm gonna make it to your ship in an hour, I gotta get my gear. He was so obviously desperate that Dash gestured for him to be gone. There was no fun in torturing someone in such dire straits. Garita fled like a Minak out of Mustafar. He didn't use the front entrance. Instead, he headed out the back. Well, said Aiden. There he goes, leaving us a thousand credits lighter for what's probably an inert piece of junk. At that price, who cares? Even if it doesn't work, the chassis alone is worth half again as much. He flipped the droid's master switch and was pleased to see its photoreceptors light up. Optic circuitry works. Aiden said. He addressed the droid. Are you functional? Who's asking? The droid replied tartly, then scanned the noisy, smoky chamber. What's wrong with this reality? Where's my boss? Dash rolled his eyes. Wonderful. The Rodian had given the droid a personality substrate, fairly easy to embed, and almost impossible to remove, because the more it interfaced with those around it, the more ingrained the substrate became. It was probably almost firmware by now. Well, nothing to be done about it. Your boss took off. The droid's optics fluttered. He left me sold you paid 1000 of my hard-earned credits 1000 i'm worth five times that the droid's voice carried such indignity that dash grinned in spite of the situation got a pretty good opinion of yourself believe me you don't want to know my opinion of you before dash could reply the bar's front door slammed open four beings entered two were large brutal looking humans followed by a barabelle. The last was a Trandoshan. They looked exactly like what they undoubtedly were. Trouble. One of the humans zeroed in on Dash's table and pointed. The others looked. Then, all four moved with a purpose. Right at them. Aiden stood. Then, cracked his knuckles. Dash turned to the droid. What do you call yourself? None of your business. Ah. Stow it. Emergency nomenclature override. New name. What do we have here? It is an LE series repair droid. Designation. LEBO 2D9. Integrating data. New name, Lebo. Okay, Lebo, let's move back. We wouldn't want you to get hit by any flying bodies. Aiden said as he and Dengar waded into the melee with the four syndicate thugs. An hour later, preparations were complete for the Outrider and its crew to lift off. As Aiden had anticipated, Kud Garida was a no-show, so they lifted off without him. No sooner were they clear of the planet's gravity well and entering deep space than they were hailed. <laughs> Heave to. Came a raspy voice over the comm, speaking Shriwook, Dash noticed with surprise. Says who? He asked. Says Craven Gash, business associate of Hawksby Ellen. <laughs> Dash blinked at the comm. Neither of the names meant anything to him, 
but the phrase business associate did. It meant trouble with a capital blaster. This far rim ward, the ubiquitous crime syndicate, Black Sun, was little more than a name. Even so, it was still a name that inspired caution. Even the Empire stepped lightly around that interplanetary criminal organization. Dash had run afoul of them more than once and he hated them with a passion, an emotion many rank and file criminals heartily echoed, although Dash's loathing went quite a bit deeper. He didn't have time to dwell on that now, though. Out here in the deep, it was the dream, he'd heard, of most small-time organ leggers, spice runners, and purveyors of other ill-gotten merchandise, to someday pull off something of such audacious criminality as to become noticed by the galactic underlords of crime, and to become a made sentient, as it were. Dash gritted his teeth. He'd thought, hoped, really, that by heading this far out, he would finally be rid of that whole noxious crew of cutthroats, at least for a while, that maybe he could, at least, let some memories settle before going back to the more civilized center. Apparently not. It would seem that we now know why Kud Garida was so anxious to consummate his deal with us. Aiden said mildly. You think? Dash flipped the com off. Time to go. Stand by for light speed. But the Wookiee was impatient. He started blasting before they could make the jump. <laughs> Charged particle beams sizzled past them, close enough to burn paint. Dash canted the ship to port, but not fast enough. A beam splashed against the rear deflectors, rocking the Outrider and jolting her crew. A sizzle of sparks erupted from the console. Aiden looked at Dash. Hyperdrive. Offline again, yeah, I noticed. He hit the thrusters, pulling the ship into a tight parabola and started looking for cover. There was nothing save the flat blackness of space, with a few stars twinkling. Very few, he realized. Somewhere close by was a light source big enough to wash out the starlight. Dash looked at the mass indicator and quickly homed in on the source. A huge gas giant, over 200,000 kilometers in diameter. He didn't stop to think. He slewed the ship to port and up. I need calculations, Lebo. Plot a slingshot orbit around that gas giant. If we can get enough speed, we can kickstart the hyperdrive. Just what makes you think I can do that? Lebo asked. And if by some chance I could, hull integrity would be at risk, and... Getting shot by that gunship will risk hull integrity a lot more, Bolthead. Garita said orbital navigation was part of your package. So get me those numbers, or I start ejecting weight. And guess what's first out the airlock? Your point is persuasive, Lebo said. A moment later, the droid rattled off a complex calculation. Implement. Dash said tersely to Aiden. No time to check the sequence. Aiden objected. If he's off by so much as a decimal point. Just do it. The Wookiee's cruiser hung close behind them as if tethered by a tractor beam, as Dash plunged the Outrider into the far reaches of the huge planet's atmosphere. Behind him, Lebo rattled off coordinates, velocities, and vectors. Optimum perigee in 12.9 seconds. Increased thrust by 0.81. 97 degrees vertical, 37 degrees starboard roll on my mark. The droid said. Four. Three. Two. One. Aiden made the corrections while Dash engaged the thrusters. The Outrider shot out of the gas giant's gravity well like a laser glancing off a durasteel mirror, and rocketed into vacuum, close enough to the cruiser that they could see their distorted reflection in its fuselage. All right. Dash yelled. The ship vibrated from the combination of speed, gravity, and the thrust of her own engines. It rattled his teeth, but the hull held together. We have hyperdrive, Aiden said, his eyes on the instruments. Fire him up. Let's ditch this system. The cruiser was turning, but there was no way it could complete the maneuver in time. Aiden threw Outrider into hyperspace. The stars blurred, 
and a moment later they winked out of normal space. My previous master wouldn't have yelled at me. Lebo pouted. When Dash glared at him, his temper slowly building. The droid added. I'm just saying. Aiden cleared his throat. Dash swung about. What? It appears that we lost Craven Gash. The Nautilan said, his voice maddeningly mild. Yeah. Dash tripped both scanners, close and long range. No hyperdrive signatures detected. Still think Lebo was a bad investment? If he hadn't been here, we'd be plasma. Aiden didn't say anything. What? Too stubborn to admit you were wrong? Not at all. I was merely wondering what this Hoxbielan fellow wanted with us. Dash shrugged. Where are you going with this? Back to the cantina, where those four thugs were obviously looking for something they thought we had. Dash turned to look at the droid. He didn't like where this was headed. They might have had a perfectly legit reason. And I suppose it's a coincidence that Kud Garid is not on this vessel, though he desperately wanted to flee Rhodia. And also that a local crime boss tried to stop us as soon as we lifted off. Dash blinked. Yeah. It didn't take an astrophysicist to plot that course intersection. Put it on autopilot. You and I and Lebo are gonna go down to the common room for a little talk. He sold me. I still can't believe it. Yeah, yeah, we've established that. Moving on. Why would this Hawksbeeland be looking for you? And seriously enough to send muscle and a cruiser? Not a clue. I've done nothing to justify such action that I recall. What about Garida? Did he do anything? Other than irritating audiences by being painfully unfunny? The droid rattled its shoulders in a shrug. Although probably he wasn't bad enough to score a death mark from a career criminal. Well, probably not. I'm curious. Aiden said. Why are you so fond of him? Lebo hesitated. He programmed me to like him. Dash laughed. That's funny. No, your face is funny. Lebo's tone was decidedly sulky. Aiden had been studying the droid intently. Now he said. That restraining bolt's pulling too much power. Dash looked at him. And you know this how? I once worked security in a droid factory on Coruscant. That is not a standard design. Get a wrench and let's have a look. Aiden removed the bolt. When he turned it over, a short, thin rod fell onto the table. Hmm. That appears to be a micro data stick. Dash picked up the tiny device, which was as long as his thumbnail and one eighth as wide. He looked at Lebo. Got a reader slot? Of course. Lebo took the proffered data stick and pressed it into the tip of one finger. There was a short pause. It's encrypted. Of course it is. Dash thought. Can you break the code? Dash asked. Eventually. Dash swore softly. He'd bet the Outrider and everything on her that the data stick belonged to Bialan and that the criminal wanted it back. A lot. This was bad. But maybe not all bad. Maybe they could swing a deal. If they could convince Craven Gash they neither knew, nor cared, what was on the data stick. Hey, we acquired this by mistake and don't know what it is, don't care, happy to give it back. And if you want to, you know, give us a little something for our trouble, we're okay with that too. That these crooks were more of the penny anti-nature could actually work in their favor. Most of them were little more sophisticated than space pirates. Surely he could smooth talk his way out of their bad graces. Could be worse. For starters, it's a list of Black Sun Vigos in the third quadrant, along with data records of their transactions for the last six months, profits and losses, along with names of those on their payrolls including police, military, judges, and politicians. Dash dead, speechless. All that. For starters. Okay, it couldn't be worse. Let's pretend we didn't hear this. 
He looked at Lebo. And you forget you know it. That would be kind of hard without scrubbing my memory. Dash felt like his scalp had been given a knuckle burn by a womper. He was quite literally stunned, speechless. How out did? Doesn't matter. Aiden said. Dash stared at him. Most likely the Rodian needed cash and agreed to ferry. Or let Lebo ferry the data. He looked at the droid. Did you have any idea of the stick's ultimate destination? Sorry. My boss was fond of the phrase, need to know. Aiden stated the obvious. Knowledge of this makes us a danger to both Black Sun and the Empire. The Imperials would move planets to get this data. With it, they could wipe out a major portion of the criminal organization in the third quadrant. Black Sun wants this, obviously, and anybody who might have learned what it was will be vaporized. Dash looked at the droid. There's probably a transponder of some sort in the data stick. That's how they tracked you. Oh, I feel so loved now. Thank you. Can't we eject the data stick into space and let them find it? They could tell it's been decoded. And we don't want that. Aiden said. The only hope we have of surviving is to make sure somehow that they, Bielin, Black Sun, or the Empire, whoever finds it first must believe that we never knew it existed, much less what was on it. Would it help if we could suddenly be halfway across the galaxy? Lebo asked. Sure couldn't hurt. What have you got in mind? They were approaching a binary star system where an old hut jump gate, though officially out of commission, was still in operation, maintained by a cadre of smugglers who offered passage for ships, in a hurry, at an inflated price. Of course, as they drew closer, they noticed two things. First, the calms were silent. Second, the gate crew wasn't responding. Was it possible that communications were down at the jump gate, or that the crew wasn't there? Or something worse? Odd. Lebo muttered. His optics momentarily defocused, which Dash knew was the droid equivalent of deep thought. Dash was temporarily distracted by a ping from the aft sensor. Craven Gash was coming up fast from behind them. Captain Rendar, we have a problem. Lebo said. I know. The gate crew is gone and the Wookiees on our tail again. Those are the least of our problems, unfortunately. The droid pointed at a hollow schematic of the star system. The secondary star in this system is a white dwarf. So? My sensors show it's accreted enough to generate matter from the primary star to put it near critical mass. Dash stared at the forward screen, which showed an awe-inspiring view of the binary system. A list of alphanumerics curtained down the screen. How long? A millennia? A century? Years? Closer to eleven. Dash felt a rush of relief. Eleven years? That's not so- Minutes. Dash was speechless. Eleven minutes until the star went supernova, producing, for a few moments, more energy than the rest of the hundred billion stars in the galaxy combined. They couldn't outrun that. No wonder the gate crew wasn't around. This operation was about to get shut down for a long, long time. You said nothing about this. All you said was there was a jump gate near a binary system. And I was right. Yeah, great job. Dash said, seething. You might have mentioned the star that in. He glanced at his chrono. Nine minutes will reduce the ship and us to clouds of quarks. Well, how was I to know? A star exists for billions of years. The odds were literally astronomical back Enough. We must get through the gate. Aiden said. And we can't do that with Craven Gash blocking our route. They'll nail us when we decelerate for transition. Dash was thinking fast and furiously. Maybe he doesn't know. If we tell him, then maybe we can both get. Oh, he knows. Aiden said. No doubt he's been told to look forward to a lingering and painful demise if he fails to recover the data stick. So for him it's a choice between protracted torture or annihilation so swift he'll never feel a thing. 
That doesn't help us. Dash said. In four minutes, we're all gonna be gamma rays. I'll distract them. Lebo said. Dash blinked. How? I will take a life pod and harass him. Quick question, are the life pods armed? Yes, but... You can make the gate transit whilst I keep the Wookiee occupied. If I keep him busy for just a few more minutes, he won't be around to follow. Neither will you. Aiden pointed out. Lebo's servos whined as he shrugged. It is all right. You've shown me more kindness in a few hours than my previous owners did. Ever. I owe you. When the Wookiee came in for the kill, Lebo's escape pod zipped in from above and started firing. The blasters on the pod weren't much, but they were enough that Craven Gash had to deal with them. Dash watched the viewport. So long, Lebo. He murmured. He looked at the data stick in his hand and considered keeping it for all of three seconds. He then quickly ejected it into space. Good luck on finding that after the star blows up, Dash thought. Dash aimed the Outrider at the gate and Aiden triggered the entrance code. Dash hoped it still worked. Otherwise, they were going to be caught on the wrong side of the gate, in the deadly sphere of a supernova. With a minute and ten seconds to go, he triggered the thrusters and felt the familiar jolt of the energy transfer as the gate lobbed them into another part of the galaxy. Too bad about the droid. Aiden said, when they were safely on the other end of the jump. I was beginning to... Wait a second. Well, that's unexpected. What? Dash followed Aiden's gaze to the viewport. The gate was dilating again. No. Not the Wookiee, he thought. There was a flash of light, and... The life pod shot through. No way. How is that even possible? Dash activated the comm. Lebo? The droid's face appeared in the heads-up display that overlaid the forward viewport. You were expecting someone else? How? Beats me. I was between the ship and the gate, battling nobly for your lives. Yes. Aiden said. And was the cruiser by any chance, eclipsing the star system when the star went nova? Maybe. Interesting. Well done. Aiden said. The supernova energy interacted with the hypermatter in both ships' drives to create a protective local space-time hyperfold. It only required that the cruiser's mass behave as a shield for the pod for a fraction of a second. Dash stared at him as if he'd grown a second head. Aiden shrugged. Elementary hyperphysics. Especially to a droid with the proper programming. Dash regarded Lebo Riley. So you knew about that stunt all along. And you had me believing you were going to sacrifice yourself. I'm insulted. Lebo said. I take on this dangerous mission, loyally, selflessly, and with no thought for my own personal safety. That is total banthaflop. Dash grinned. Okay. Come aboard. And welcome to the crew, Tin Man. Dash said, laughing. 